Welcome to our third webinar in the Intelligence Operations Series. My name is Laura Krennic, and I'm on the Intelligence team here at Esri. Your presenters today are Wendy Creighton and James Jones. In today's webinar, we will discuss how operation centers can integrate and visualize field-collected data with other intelligence in real time for decision-making and response. If you'd like to follow along with the slides, you can find these in the handout section on your right. You may also ask questions at any time during the questions box on your right, and we will provide answers during the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. There will also be survey questions when you exit, and we ask you please take a moment to complete the questions so we may continue to present on topics that are useful to you. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the same page you registered from. I now turn over the webinar to Wendy. Thanks, Laura. The demand for relevant and timely information is critical at all echelons of command. Successful military operations depend on accurate, up-to-date field conditions and intelligence. Sharing timely information between field units and operation centers can be a challenge. Today, we are going to discuss how to configure and use operations dashboard for ArcGIS for comprehensive situational awareness. My name is Wendy Creighton. I am an intelligence specialist here at Esri. I have 20 years experience working with defense and intelligence organizations, focusing on security and intelligence operations. Providing technology expertise and demonstrations for you today is James Jones. James, would you like to introduce yourself? James, are you on mute? Oh, sorry. I was having minor te <laughs> technical difficulties. Uh, hello, I'm uh, James Jones, Solution Engineer on the Defense Team. I uh, look forward to working with all of you today. Thanks, James. There is a growing demand for actionable intelligence at all levels of command. Information is needed that is timely and, in many cases, real time. It provides a location or spatial context also. Location intelligence can reveal relationships and patterns that may otherwise have been missed. This information needs to be discoverable, accessible, and easy to use. Geospatial technology provides a fundamental framework where we can organize and integrate our data. We can visualize and analyze relationships and patterns. We can conduct predictive and forensic analysis. We can also accomplish design and planning activities. Ultimately, we can make informed decisions based on the information and the intelligence products created and then take appropriate action. GIS by its nature is a platform for integrating data analysis from multiple intelligence disciplines and connecting intelligence production to operations. As a result, GIS supports the planning and execution of multiple missions through sharing of information, collaboration, and decisive action. ArcGIS truly integrates people, technology, and processes to support multiple missions across all levels of command, all integrated, all working off the same map. To better understand our environment, we have divided our users into three groups. Each interacts with data and information, but each group has different perspective on working with that data and different tasks or tools. Planning and operations personnel want to be able to manipulate and visualize data for situational awareness and most important decision making. Information from the field needs to be timely, accurate, and integrated with more formal analysis products. Traditional field collections using traditional paper workflows don't provide the dynamic visualization of data and take large amounts of time and manual effort to integrate with other analysis products. How can your organization leverage ArcGIS to better understand the operating environment, assess risks, and take decisive action? Welcome to Operations Dashboard for ArcGIS. 
It provides an organization a common operating picture to monitor and respond to day-to-day -day events. It is designed to support full spectrum of device platforms from the multi-monitor video walls found within an operation center to a touchscreen tablet, touch tablet, such as an iPad or Android device. Conceptually, there are two types of people who use a dashboard, a publisher who creates operation views or dashboards, and a user who, consume, who consumes that information. Operations Dashboard brings data together in an easy to use, understand view. It can display real-time data and alerts, field collection information, and data from databases and online services. It's easy to configure and use, works on desktops and tablets, and is available in ArcGIS Enterprise 10.6. Some examples of usage patterns include monitoring of operations in a common operation picture, incident management and briefings, and situational reports. To show us how to get started with operations dashboard, I'm going to turn it over to James. James? All right, hello. Uh, let me just get my screen all set up. All right, there we go. Everyone can see my screen all right? All right, uh, so um, let's go ahead and get started with Operations Dashboard. So as kind of Wendy mentioned before, Operations Dashboard um, can work with ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. And there's kind of several ways that we can go ahead and get started um, with the actual application itself. So in order to get started, one of the first ways that we can do is from our homepage um, of either ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise, uh, what we can do is we can go to the app launcher and we can launch uh, Operations Dashboard directly from the app launcher. And this will take us to kind of a common screen that will show you either my, my dashboards or my shared dashboards. This is what you'd want to do is if you were going to be using Operations Dashboard more from a uh, either launching an editing session or if you wanted to actually view it. Now, if you wanted to create a new operations dashboard, there's a few different ways you can do that. The first way is via the map viewer. So directly within your map viewer on ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise, you can go to share, create a new web app, and then share as a type of operations dashboard. Um, another option is from the actual content page. So directly on the content page of your online or enterprise uh, portal. Uh, you can go to uh, go to create over on the left hand side, go down the drop down using operations dashboard, and then you can start creating a new dashboard from there. Um, and, or the other option is you have the option of selecting it directly from the item page as well. Um, and that's going to be located underneath the create web app uh, drop down as well. Uh, here in just a minute, I'll show you, uh, I'll walk you all through how you can do that quickly. Um, let's get on to the next one. So uh, whenever you initially open up operations, dashboard uh, you're going to come into the dashboard home page and ultimately what you can do from here is you can kind of create and manage your dashboard items um, you can either view them if you wanted to say put them up on a screen or tablet or something um, to kind of help generate that real-time uh, insight into what's going on into uh, whatever your dashboard is visualizing um, or you can even launch an editing session directly from that uh, Within this dashboard homepage, it also gives you the option of searching for dashboards. If you if you have an organization that has a lot of dashboards, you can search for it um, just based on uh, keyword tags, whatever you, whatever it is might you might need. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into it, and let's start examining it. So here uh, I have an ArcGIS Online organization. This is our uh, one for the Esri federal team. Uh, and if I wanted to actually open up the Operations Dashboard app, first thing I want to do is make sure, A, that I'm signed in. And then I want to go to the app launcher. And then from here, I can select Operations Dashboard. What this does is it's going to go ahead and bring me to the uh, dashboard homepage and it's going to start with my dashboards so this screen right here represents all the dashboards that i've created uh, 
I can switch to the Share Dashboards tab, and that's all the dashboards that have been shared with my organization. And then I can actually launch dashboards as I need. So here's just a few examples of various different dashboards. This one um, is referencing um, a geo event service that's going out and pulling data coming off of a uh, RSS feed and doing some processing off that, which is just showing basic incidents. Um, we also have the option of integrating it with applications such as Workforce and Collector, and some of our more mobile applications in this case. You know, this is one more tailored towards um, workers out in the field collecting data and everything else along those lines. All right, so let's go through and actually take a step-by-step -step approach into the various different ways that we can actually create a dashboard. So in order to, the first way is we can do it from our content page. So we can do that directly within our content page and ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS uh, Enterprise Organization. Uh, just go up here to create, go down the drop down, underneath the apps header, there's the using operations dashboard, which allows us to launch it from there. Uh, the next, I, next way we could do it is directly within our item details. Uh, and yet again, it's over here on the create web app drop down. And then we just hit the drop down and then create using operations dashboard. And then finally, we can do it directly in the map viewer as it is. So in order to do this, first thing you wanna do is, if you just got done adding layers or anything else along those lines, you wanna make sure that it's saved. And then you wanna go up here to share, and then you're gonna go create web app, and then operations dashboard. You're gonna give it a title. Make sure it has tags. And just hit done. And it's going to go ahead and launch the dashboard in edit mode. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our slides and let's talk a little bit more about authoring these dashboards. So a dashboard item uh, is one of the main components of an actual dashboard. Um, and it really allows us to kind of really bring together various different data sets and display it. And we have a few different elements that we can really kind of use. I'll talk more in depth about each of the individual pieces here in a minute, but some of the more common items are maps, lists, serial charts, gauges, uh, and all those can kind of exist in different spaces within the dashboard itself. A dashboard can actually ingest and integrate with a lot of very common ArcGIS data sources. Uh, it can be online content web services, or web services, excuse me, um, that are discoverable via your uh, ArcGIS Online organization or your enterprise, if it's in there, or it could be added from elsewhere. Uh, field collection data, so yet again, integrating data from workforce, survey one, two, three, uh, collector, you can, you can integrate all that as well. And then if you have social, sensor data, social media data, GPS locations that you wanna bring in, stream in it, say they're being written to a feature class, you can have that as well. Or even real-time data from GeoEvent Server. So if we wanna add an element to the dashboard, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna select the element that we wanna add in. And then we're gonna actually go through and configure the properties so we can conf configure how it looks. Uh, we can configure the data source and the formatting of that option. So if we wanted to apply queries, if we wanted to apply um, specific ranges to it, we can. Um, and then ultimately all the configuration is going to be very different based upon the element type. Some items have a lot of configuration options available to them, some have less. So it really kind of depends on, on which one uh, you're using, it depends on how much configuration options you will have. <clears throat> Then um, one of the getting close to the final steps is going to be placing our dashboard in, in the layout position that we actually want. And then there's going to be an option at the top left that's gonna allow us to kind of drag it, move it around, do whatever we need to do. So let's talk about some of the option or the dashboard elements that you can incorporate. Um, so we have the header option, which is just as it sounds, it's, a, it's an option to allow you to kind of present a good title to your slide, but this can also house a lot of different 
options as well. You can use this to provide filters for your dashboard, provide links to other websites, uh, etc. cetera. Um, then we also have a left panel, which kind of functions similar to the dash or the header, and which allows you to kind of provide um, an area to provide filters and other items like that. The map and map legend, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, a serial chart can take a few different forms. Uh, you can take a, it can be as simple as a bar chart, or it can be a line line chart, or something referred to as a smooth line chart, which is the same thing as a line chart, but the, the sharp edges have been kind of rounded out to make it appear more natural and kind of free-flowing. Um, a pie chart, uh, as simple as it sounds, you have an example of one right here. Um, finally, an indicator is uh, kind of a numeric value that you can set specific filters on um, and have it display in different colors. Um, and then a list option, uh, which allows us to kind of pr present uh, various different items. Uh, you can have it displayed in, you know, most recent on top or the oldest, however you want to display it. Uh, and then finally, details and rich text allows you to incorporate more text into your dashboard itself. All right, uh, so for our serial chart and our pie chart elements, um, we do have a few different ways of grouping values or uh, kind of categorizing values. One of those is we can use an option called grouped values, which uh, I'll talk more about here later. Um, we also have the option of grouping items by features or by fields. So let's talk a little bit more about the option to group values. So what, what this does is it allows us to display a unique value in a field, but more than likely it's going to be a categorical value. So i.e. it's going to be some sort of string. So in this case, we are specifically uh, referencing this first column over here. And say we wanted to identify how many water body types that we have of a certain type. We can build a bar chart based off of that with the height of the bar being how many times um, that specific type of water body was, was present. The next option is uh, going to be a feature option. What this allows us to do is allows us to get a little bit more finite, allows us to kind of break a uh, bar chart down into kind of a multi-bar. So in this case, we're sorting by two different um, fields, in which case we're doing a water body type, and yet again, something like a lake, reservoir, swamp. But it also allows us to categorize it by county as well. So if you want to kind of get the multi-bar chart going, you can use a feature option. And then finally, a field value um, really allows us to use a comparison of values in multiple fields, more than likely some sort of numeric value. Um, so if you already have something that's in a numeric value, you can actually do comparisons inside the bar chart, but they just have to be in the same unit of measurement. Um, so just make sure if you have some sort of measurement, say if you're using sensor data for weather and you're collecting rain or anything else along those lines, just make sure that whatever you're comparing is um, in the same unit of measurement. All right, uh, so we have a few different layout options. Um, elements can really kind of be con configured and laid out uh, pretty much any way you want. You can put them any place except for two specific items. Um, the header and the left panel, those are kind of locked into a very specific position. The header is going to be place at the top and the left panel is always going to be your far most left object that's going to be in the dashboard. Other than that, you can rearrange and mix and match um, the items in your dashboard pretty much anywhere you want. <clears throat> you can also stack or group items. Uh, whenever you want to do this, uh, it's very simple. You just can just drag it, drag one dashboard item over top of the other, and it will give you the option of stacking it. Um, so whenever you're stacking, it allows you to it'll essentially add tabs at the bottom of the item itself that will enable you to kind of switch between different views. So it allows you to kind of maximize the space that you have on the dashboard itself. And right here we have just an example of a uh, stacked elements in which we can have multiple different chart types that represent different features kind of across the, across the board. All right, so let's go through and let's add a few um, different elements to our dashboard. All 
All right, so here's our dashboard that we created kind of at the beginning of our first step last time. Um, and let's go in and the first thing we want to do is say we want to, well, let me talk a little bit more about the data that's actually being represented here. So here what I have is I have a dashboard that's going to represent all the crime data for Washington, D.C. over a certain month. And uh, I've also incorporated uh, some of the metro stops, uh, some of the metro lines, kind of mainly as points of reference, and I also have the police districts. I have a workforce project in there that has um, has me as a as a worker, and here I am out here in our Washington D.C. office. So you can see that I'm out there working, and uh, that provides us uh, some sort of opportunity to kind of provide some of that live data into the dashboard. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and create a serial chart for our DC crime and we want to kind of visualize how much crime we're seeing per day. So yet again, this is um, DC crime data. Um, the different colors kind of represent um, different crime types. So the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and add in a serial chart. In this case, we're going to base it off of our DC crime layer. In this case, uh, we have our different categories that we can select from. In since I want to visualize it by date, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at grouped values, and then I'm going to, in the category fields, go down to our date column, which is our last field conveniently labeled date. And since it recognizes it as an actual date field, it's going to automatically turn on the parse dates column, and it's going to give me some different options as far as the minimum period. Uh, if I have highly a high velocity data set, I can have it grouped by seconds or minutes. Uh, if I have something that's a little bit slower, um, I can have it categorized either by day or month uh, or even year. In this case, uh, since it's just one month data, I just want to go ahead and leave it as a day. I also have the option of adding different statistics. If so, if I have a numeric value that I want to actually um, display slightly differently, uh, what I I can actually have it do is provide different measures or different statistics. I can have it, instead of just doing a raw count, I can have it sum up all the uh, all the values in that specific that field, or I can do an average or a minimum or a maximum. So yet again, it just kind of really depending on your dashboard and how you want it to look and operate really allows you to kind of have a few different options. Uh, let's go over. Uh, we can change our text color if we want to. Um, so this is going to be the text around the outside. Um, I'm going to. I'm pretty happy with the black, so I'll leave it as that. I can provide category axis labels, and this one is uh, dates. Then I can even provide a scroll bar if I wanted to say be able to zoom in and move back and forth. Um, I can provide the value axis. I can give that one a title. And in this case, I'm going to give this one number of incidents. And as you can see, it shows up here on the side. Yet again, this is a lot of the same options as before. And then if I jump down here to series, this gives me the option of changing the bar or the, the chart type. So right now it's a bar chart. I can change it to a line chart, or I can change it to a smooth line chart. Um, I'm pretty happy with the bar chart, so I'm just going to kind of leave that default. But I do want to change the color. Uh, let's change it to maybe, say, a nice red. Then finally, over here on the general options, we want to go ahead and give this item a name. So we're going to call this crimes per day. And then we're just going to go ahead and hit done. Now, uh, it goes ahead and adds it to our dashboard, but I don't like it over here on the left-hand side, so I want it to be down here at the bottom of my dashboard. So what I'm going to do is go up here to my item, to the top left, select the drag item option, and then I'm just going to drag it down here to the bottom and dock it as a row. Then I'm going to shrink my, my chart item a little bit, and let's recenter our map. Now, uh, let's go ahead and add in a legend just so we can kind of understand what these values going on our dashboard kind of represent. So yet again, going up here to the add item, and we just go here to map legend. This one's pretty self, uh, this one actually has the fewest options that you can actually configure. Um, really only allows you to give it a title or a description if you want to, um, completely optional. Just go ahead and hit done whenever you want that. add that. 
Uh, and let's say we want that over here on the left side of our map. All right, we can shrink our legend just a little bit. So we're, we're saving some space on our dashboard. Now let's uh, go ahead and create a pie chart, but this time we wanna see if we can visualize uh, what shift these crimes are occurring on. So um, what we're going to do is we're gonna create a pie chart for that. So we're gonna go up here to add item, go to pie chart, select a crime, and then we're gonna select our category, category field. In this case, I'm gonna select shift, and then we're gonna go with account, uh, go over here, we can change our chart colors if we wanted to. Our slices, we can actually uh, rename our slices. So notice right now our slices are on all cap caps. Let's go ahead and rename it to make it just a little bit easier to visualize. Midnight and evening. Go over here to general. And let's give our item a name, crime by shift. And let's go ahead and hit done. And it's gonna go ahead and add in our pie chart. And we're gonna put it on the right side of our map so our serial chart kind of remains. Um, kind of the main focus down here at the bottom. All right, uh, another thing that we want to do is say we want to get a total count of all the items coming out of this feature service. And in order to do that, we're going to create something referred to as an indicator. So yet again, we're going to go up here to add item, go to add indicator. What this indicator actually represents um, is some sort of text value that we wanted to add. In this case, yet again, going back to DC crime. In this case, we're going with um, our statistic is just going to pull directly out of the total number of features that we have. Um, we can provide a different filter if we wanted to. Um, say if we wanted to filter based upon, uh, specific type of crime or, there we go, um, specific type of crime we could. Um, in this case, I want to do total amounts of crime, uh, and then we want to change the indicator, and in this case, total crime. And then we give this a name, which is total crime indicator. Hit done, and that adds it in there. And let's just go ahead and put this on top of our pie chart. All right, let's add in another indicator, but this time let's specify one of the crimes. Um, so this case, let's go back in here to filter, and we're going to go to offense. And then let's just say we're interested in all of the homicides. Um, in that case, uh, going back to indicator, we're going to give it the top text of homicides. And let's make this text red. Let's call this homicides. And let's make sure that's red. And that's red. So essentially, if you want to change the color of the text itself, you're going in here to the indicator and change these two values. Yet again, let's change the top text color to red and red. So now we have all of our text on this one is actually red. Just hit done. And let's say we want to stack this one on top or underneath our total crime. So yet again, we're going to drag the item, go over here to our total crime. But instead of placing it on one of these outside ones, which allows us to dock it as a column or a row, we're going to dock it in the middle, which allows us to stack the items. So now we have our two indicators. Um, but uh, And it goes ahead and adds tabs at the bottom, but they're both labeled indicators. So whenever we do this, it gives us the option of changing the names. You just hit the little pencil. In this case, it's, this is going to be total. And we can change this one to homicides. So now we have multiple, multiple indicators, um, one for total crime, one for homicides, and we can keep on adding and stacking as much as we want. 
Right. Um, and then finally, let's go ahead and add in a gauge, um, which allows us, which will allow us to sh visualize how many workers we have active and currently operating. So for this one, we're going to go up here to add item. We're going to go to gauge, and this time we're going to select our workers layer that is coming out of workforce. We can filter that one if we wanted to. Um, in this case, I'm just interested in the count because that's going to be the total number of workers that we have. But I know that we actually don't have 100 workers. Uh, we actually only have five. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh that. And notice how it changes um, the, the chart to actually re reference that as well. On the gauge, we have a few different options. Uh, it can either be a progress bar, which shows completion, or it can be a meter, which is useful if you're using this to monitor uh, flow of some sort, something like uh, energy consumption, water consumption. But we're interested. We're going to leave it at some progress. Um, you have a few different shape types. This is the horseshoe, which is kind of like a three-quarter circle. You can do a full circle, or you can do a half donut. I enjoy the half donut. Um, you can change the form, the formatting pattern. So the formatting pattern essentially allows you to dictate your numbering style. So if you have numbers with uh, decimal points but you only want to visualize it as whole numbers you can just delete the last person um, last number sign off that and go with that or if you don't want to have commas in there you can do that as well uh, you can change different thresholds so a threshold represents kind of a portion of the whole in this case I want to add a few different uh, thresholds onto my part my gauge to kind of show if um, if a uh, if we fall underneath a certain amount of workers, um, the gauge will change colors. So I'm going to add two thresholds, and this one on the first color or the first one's going to be 60%. The next one's going to be 80%, and my final one's going to be 100%. So I'm going to set the color for this one. Uh, my 60% is going to be red. That's kind of my critical. Uh, my 80% is going to be that nice orange color, and my 100% is going to be Green. Yet again, we're going to go ahead and give it a name. So, number of workers. And we're just going to hit done and it adds it. In this case, I want to stack this one underneath my pie chart. So, this one is crime per shift. And then I want to rename my gauge to give it a name so I can understand what it is. And this is my number of workers. Right. And so now the final thing that we want to do is we want to go in and add in a header. So this one's fairly simple. Just go up here, add item header, and then we can give it a title. It automatically defaults to the title of the uh, item that you saved, but in this case, Let's just give it a little bit more descriptive title, Washington, D.C. Criminal Activity. In this case, uh, we've specified the title as being something different. We can specify the size as being large. We can make it smaller, or we can just leave it as kind of the normal size. If we wanted to add in a logo, we could. Uh, if we had a link to an image, we can include that as well. Um, or we can change kind of the background um, and kind of give it a different picture than kind of like the standard white. With that, we have our um, header added in there. Now, if you notice, whenever I made any changes, um, up in the top right, my save button turned blue. So whenever you're in the edit mode for operations dashboard and you see your save button up here being blue, that indicates that you have an item that needs that your dashboard needs saved. Um, you can just go ahead and hit save. It'll do its thing, and then it'll give you a little check mark, and it'll turn white. And that indicates that your dashboard is currently saved. And um, whenever you launch it, it'll look exactly like this. Let's jump back over to the slides. And let's talk a little bit more about um, making our dashboards interactive. So what does interactivity in a dashboard mean? Um, this, what this really allows us to do is kind of really do a deep dive with the dashboard itself. So we can filter based upon either an attribute or a spatial extent. Um, and you, we can even associate dashboard elements with one another. Um, so whenever you have interactivity, so whenever you conduct 
an interaction with one element, say you zoom in or say you select a date range, um, it triggers a response in another element. So let's kind of visualize that. So you have your element one, let's say it's a map frame, um, and you zoom in on that map frame, that incurs an action on element two. In which case that action could be, I want you to filter all my charts based upon the current map extent. So there are many different act interactions that are possible and they really ultimately support different workflows. Yet again, I kind of mentioned some of those earlier. Uh, you can do filters, uh, you can do um, spatial extent filters, you can do attribute filters, you can do date range filters. I'll show you some of those here in a little bit. So there are two concepts for inter interactivity. So the first one is an action. Um, and this is when an event is applied to a source element, that target element kind of responds. So yet again, some of this, these kind of it could be like yet again, like the filter. Or another common one is if you're connecting to kind of live data is that flash. So what happens is if a new item gets added to it, say if you got something coming in from GeoEvent, or if you've got something coming in from a feature service that is being updated constantly, um, anytime a new item is added, you can have that flash. Uh, or you can even have a pan or zoom to the new one. Um, another option is what's referred to as a selector. Um, and this can exist in either the header or the left panel. And what this allows us to do is allows us to create um, like filters. And then, like one of the more common ones is kind of attribute filters. Say if we just wanted to filter by a police division or a police district. Uh, or if we wanted to um, filter by a specific date range. Um, so we have a few different selector types. Um, one is the selector user interface, which that is the whatever we design to control that action or to control that trigger to that action. So we have three different types. Um, it can be categorical, which um, this ultimately is going to be more of like a drop down type of menu or it can be just a simple button. But uh, this is going to be if you turn this on, it essentially enables a filter on your data. Oh. Um, another item is a numeric option, uh, which this allows us to select any values within a range. So say if I'm interested, say if I have a dashboard on weather and I'm only interested in uh, rain events that are above one inch, uh, I can select, if I have a numeric value, I can do that filter, then I can filter based upon that. And then with this one, whenever you're creating the actual filter, it's going to give you um, kind of a lot more of the options. You know, it's going to provide you sliders, everything else along those lines. And then finally, a date range. Um, this can be either, uh, it can show a list of predefined date queries or it can uh, even allow you to kind of do a date time picker. All right, so whenever you want to configure interactivity, there's a few different ways you can do it depending on whether or not you're using ArcGIS Enterprise or ArcGIS Online. Um, the first option or is going to be hovering over the element and then you're going to configure the actions. Um, in ArcGIS Online, it looks a little bit different than that. And then we're going to go to add action. Um, and what that action actually is, is, you know, if we can pan, zoom, filter. Yet again, one of those items that I referenced uh, I believe it was two slides ago. And then we've once we have the action that we want to occur, we can select the target element. So whatever action we want to occur against or whatever we want the action to occur against. And then if we need any additional properties, we can go ahead and select those. All right, so let's go through and uh, set up some actions and selectors. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to go through and set up a date selector. So I'm going to select or set my date selector to come from my my header. So I'm just going to go up here and to this drop down, add date selector. In this case, um, I either have options of doing a defined selector or a date picker. I'm just going to select a date picker on this case. And uh, I'm going to give it a name. I'll just call it date picker. In this case, um, so I've selected date picker. I have two different options. I have an input type of just a single or a range. 
Um, so a range is going to give me two date pickers. A single is just going to provide me one. And, and now I can choose my actions. So from this action, what, it, what it's going to do, um, since it's a date picker, we only really have the option of doing a filter. So we'll do a filter, and then I'll add my targets. In this case, I want to do it against the DC crime. Um, and my various different indicators that I've created earlier. All right, and once I have that selected, since these all came out of the same feature class, um, I'm just going to select my feature or my target field. In this case, since I am doing a date filter, it's going to default to only the date field inside of that feature class. So selecting date for all the target fields. And then once I have that done, I can just hit done. And now I have a date picker inside of my header. So now just to kind of check that it works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a date, 2017. Uh, let's just say February 1st, 2017 through, say February 8th, 2017. And notice that once we got that done, um, all the filters updated. My serial chart down here changed, my indicator changed, my map um, layout, the items displayed inside of that changed, and my homicides changed as well. So if you want to clear something out of your picker, uh, your date picker, you just select the date and just hit the delete button, and then it resets. So now let's go ahead and add in a map extent filter. In order to do this, we're just going to go, we're going to start this from our map extent or from our map. I'm going to go up here to the upper left, and then we're going to go to configure. Now inside of here, um, I want to go over to map actions, and then the only option that we have in here is when map extent changes, I'm going to go ahead and add an action. Yet again, it's going to be a filter, and then I'm going to change this to crimes per day total crime indicator, uh, crimes per shift, and homicides. And now that I have that set, I'm just going to hit done. And let's go ahead and test it out. All right, so notice how I zoomed in. My crime, my total crime changed, my homicides changed, and my uh, serial chart down here at the bottom changed as well. So as I zoom around, pan around, um, notice how it's constantly updating the dashboard. I got out DC for there for a minute. All right, so let's just go ahead and zoom back out to the full extent. And should update here in a second to show all the events. There we go. And now we have some of our interactivity uh, configured. Let's just go ahead and save it. And now we've kind of com we've completed our dashboard. All right, um, so some just general notes on creating dashboard applications. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to consider the audience for your dashboard. So yet again, kind of make it tailored to whoever it's going to be. If it's executives and decision makers, make sure that they have all the necessary information to make their decisions. Um, or if it's you know other workers who need to be informed of other, other operations going on, make sure it just essentially has the information that they need to conduct their job. Um, and really, the other thing about dashboards is that it should be kind of simple and kind of really help you kind of at, at a quick glance understand what's going on. So with a dashboard, simple is better. The more simple you can make it, the better off. It doesn't need to be overly complicated. It doesn't need to have a whole bunch of widgets and gizmos doing a whole bunch of everything else. Um, so the simpler that you can make it, the better off it will be. Um, also, kind of keep in mind, kind of keep track of how this dashboard's going to be used. Um, is it going to be an unattended display? If so, you want to have it kind of focused on, um, you want to probably not include a lot of the interactivity, um, but you want to maybe, depending on the size of the screen, you can incorporate more items into it. Um, or uh, have fewer items um, kind of 
keeping in mind security concerns about the data that you're displaying on your dashboard. Or if it's going to be something that maybe a user or an executive might pull up on, say, a tablet or a computer, uh, you can include that interactivity so they can zoom in, scale around, do whatever they need to do. Um, one thing to kind of, a couple things to kind of note on the uh, implementation of the visualizations, kind of avoid the kitchen sink, which the kitchen sink is essentially just throwing every type of uh, item on there just because uh, just because you can. Uh, kind of really keep it functional, keep the dashboard simple, because simple is elegant, and elegant usually works out pretty well. And then yet again, kind of make it specific and focused. It's okay to have multiple dashboards that kind of referencing the same data if they're being kind of presented to different kind of customers. So your senior executives might want a specific view for one thing, while your line workers might need a dashboard that's kind of focused in on something else. And then finally, um, share your dashboard with others, unless it's obviously security concerns dictate otherwise. But um, dashboards are designed to be shared, are designed to kind of provide that insight into what's going on with the data that you're trying to share. Um, so they're designed to be shared, so share them uh, according to your security policies. And with that, uh, I believe I am turning it back over to Wendy to uh, cover a few more things. So thank you very much. Thanks, James. Uh, important data has been collected in the field, as James has shown, and can be displayed in operations dashboard. If you'd like to learn more about using some of these apps, please join us on May 23rd for our final webinar of this series. Our presentation will include how to download and edit data in Collector for ArcGIS, complete forms and surveys in Survey123, and navigate using Navigator for ArcGIS. Today, we have shown how to configure and use Operations Dashboard for situational awareness. Ops Dashboard leverages the ArcGIS platform and integrated apps to manage and use data from multiple intelligence and open sources. It enables current workflows and analyst tradecraft and empowers your workforce with integrated configurable apps. And it ultimately informs decision makers and operators with timely, accurate, and essential information. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you're interested in connecting with our defense and intelligence community, you can find us on GeoNet at community.esri.com under Industries for Defense and Intelligence. Here you can ask technical questions, read customer success stories, view user-created story maps, and find additional information on products or solutions. We also offer a series of regional technical exchange meetings. Some of these also offer hands-on exercises and training. Register at go.esri.com slash di-series. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Laura for questions. Thank you, Wendy and James. Now we'd like to give you all the opportunity to get your specific questions answered. Please use the questions tab on your right to type in your questions and we will answer them here live. Our first question, we do have some in here already. Uh, Wendy or James, how do I get real-time data and alerts into my dashboard? Okay, uh, that's actually pretty simple. Um, Whenever you want to integrate real-time date or real-time events or alerts, um, it kind of really goes back to that source web map that you use to create the uh, the dashboard. Um, so as long as the either the streaming service or the feature class that those features are being written to is active inside of that web map, you can directly um, add it to that web map, and then whenever you share it as a dashboard, it'll be there. Um, Act or ready to use inside of the uh, dashboard, and then you can just use it as kind of any other layer inside of uh, the dashboard is, and use it just kind of the way you would any other layer. Great, thank you, James. I have another question that came through, and it says, my dashboard has a couple of tabs. Sometimes I have a hard time finding which selection I left turned on in one of my tabs. 
is it possible to deselect all with a single button or some other way? I haven't. So it really kind of depends, not really all of them at a specific time. It really depends on what types of filters you have kind of located inside of them. Um, some options, let me share my screen real quick. All right, uh, so for example, can everyone see my screen? It should be a dashboard of maritime options. Yes. So in this one, uh, you have a few different options of selecting items. Select, and it allows you to select. And then sometimes it'll bring up this uh, little window of how many features got selected. If you just want to deselect them, you just hit the little X and it deselects them. Um, if you have a lot of items um, and you're not exactly quite sure what it is, you can just hit refresh on the dashboard. It'll kind of reset everything. It'll kind of take the dashboard back to its native state and kind of go back that way. But um, yet again, kind of going back to say, like a date range, um, if you if you have a date picker that you're that you're using, um, deselecting those is just simple as highlighting the date and deleting it. Um, so diff different types of selections have different options, and if you're kind of unsure exactly what you have, just hit refresh on your dashboard, and it will um, ultimately just kind of reset it back to its kind of native state. Great, thank you. I have another question here. Does Ops Dashboard work on premise and with Portal? So it does. Um, so Operations Dashboard is both available in ArcGIS Enterprise um, and ArcGIS uh, Online. So for example, this is a, uh, an example of ArcGIS Online. Um, it's available here. Uh, I can pull up one of my portals, WDC Defense. Let's sign in real quick. And then yet again, so this is ArcGIS Enterprise, um, and it uh, operates just the same as it does with ArcGIS Online. Um, the releases are identical, and it works the exact same way. Wonderful. And then I have one more question here. It says, can I put graphs and charts from Insights into the dashboard? Not yet. I believe that is in the roadmap. I'm not exactly sure when that's coming, but I believe it is something that they're talking about. Um, because uh, it's an excellent question. I don't believe so yet, but it it's, should be coming. Okay, perfect. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, for anyone out there looking to see what updates we have um, to any of our products here at Esri, um, I recommend that you look at our user conference this summer. We usually have most of our updates um, announced at that time. So it's a great opportunity to see what's, a, what's lying ahead. So that's the last question that we have um, today. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up the webinar. Thank you very much um, to everyone who attended today. We will have a recording of this webinar posted online. Um, it will be up early next week. As you exit the webinar, you will have survey questions that pop up. Please do take the time to answer these questions so we can continue to have webinars. We can continue to have webinars on topics that are useful to you. I hope you all have a great day and thank you again, Wendy and James.